In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. That's a little verse I found this week. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I cannot feel it. I believe in God even when he is silent. And the hymn we just sang, the Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. And we need that trust and we need that light and we need that truth in these days. There is no shortage of difficult news for us to bear. In fact, the last couple of years, especially since the devastation of 9-11, the media has almost delighted in bombarding us with difficult, devastating and life-altering news on a regular basis. And they don't just bombard us, they saturate and overwhelm us with it. Become so we can't turn it off. Changes the way we react. As well as the news of the ongoing pandemic, which seems to never end, locally we've had news of floods and lives lost and hopes devastated and dashed. Media outlets seem to be able to get to all these places and offer, you know, that eyewitness version. And they temper the bad news with a little bit of good news or cutesy stories about people, you know, the mud army or some such. But often these little bits of story do little to alleviate or temper our fear. An example of this is the escalating war in the Ukraine. If you're anything like me, you might even notice that you hold your breath during these times of deep, unsettling fear as to what's happening next. Imagine what the media would look like if only five minutes was dedicated to reporting the facts, not sensationalising them, and 55 minutes was dedicated to good, in-depth, good news stories. Imagine how our psyche would change. This is what the gospel endeavours to do. This is the truth of the good news of Christ. Here's the bad news, and it could be really bad, but here's the good news to overcome it. Would be a more equitable balance. And even as all this is being said, when the end of life comes and death is now the reality, still the good news prevails. That's the truth of the gospel. But for some in the world, maybe most, death is still death. And it's still the end of life as we know it. And ultimately, death is what feeds our fears because we put ourselves right in the middle of whatever it is the media are sensationalising. What the gospel aims to do is feed our life, even in face, in the face of death, to remind us that death is the beginning, not an end. But still we are human and we struggle with doubt. We can have faith and believe fully that there's something after, but still death is incredibly hard, the last great mystery of life. So many of us from an early age sort of bury our heads in the sand a bit and ignore the inevitable passage of time. And the younger you are, the easier it is to ignore. And the older you get, <laughs> the harder it is to ignore. We try not to think about it, but then we have Lent. And Lent is that really special time where we hold things a little bit more in balance, that life and death, good and bad, black and white, aspects of life. Lent is the time when we engage with death. 
from Ash Wednesday on, it is more appropriate to speak about and engage with death more intimately. We recognise and remember that God is the constant and the truth and can lessen our fear over death, but that it is inevitable. God is the good news. Psalm 27, which we reiterated in the Taizé chant that we sang, reminds me of this truth, this balance that we hold. The words of the hymn as well as the psalm are not only a prayer of deep longing, but they're a keening of the heart to the soul of God who knows all. And they're prayed in response to that Genesis reading we had this morning about Abram, about the trust that he developed in God, that he would go on. And it reminds us that that promise to Abram that his issue would number more than all the stars in all the earth is the same promise that we're given. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust. These words can be anathema to the secular world, especially when such devastating things like the war in the Ukraine or a worldwide pandemic drown out the good news where people are not only dying and hurting and grieving but they're doing so in ways we can't even imagine and the secular world mirrors the words of the soldiers when Jesus is on the cross if you believe in God let God stop the devastation why are you afraid don't you believe God will save you Perhaps you've even asked these questions of yourself, especially at times of heightened fear. But let me remind you that doubt and fear, and even death, are very human. Our brains have the ability to imagine and make our fears real, even in the face of faith. Add to that media saturation, and fear and doubt are a foregone conclusion, no matter what you believe. This is where the good news can break through. God understands our fear. I think that's why we can relate to some of the characters within the biblical story so well. They're human and relatable. Their lives were struggling and difficult, and we can relate. They felt what we feel, struggled as we do, longed to be comforted by God just as we do, fair weather and foul. God is not just in our grand declarations of faith, but also when we're so afraid that we're paralysed of rational thought. For good reason, then, the psalm is a favourite. It helps to remind us that even in the face of fear, the Lord is our light. In God I trust. It carries with it the hope of humanity. This Lenten season is a perfect time to be reminded that death is not the end, but very much the beginning. We can trace forwards and backwards from the cradle to the cross. Lent reminds us that death is not weird or something to be avoided or even numbed to, but that death is a part of life, the fulfilment of life. On Ash Wednesday, the dust of death is smeared onto our faces in the cross of Christ. With the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Lent doesn't ask us to keep our heads buried in the sand, but lift them to the ash. Its focus does not encourage us to shy away from the harder things like our own mortality in God's absence after the crucifixion, but rather it reminds us of God's presence with us always, including within death. That's why Lent is punctuated by these mini Easter days, Sundays. It's not all about death. No matter how much time we have left, we are all still breathing. And just think about what a gift that is. Talk to someone who's asthmatic 
or got emphysema, who can't breathe, who struggles with every breath, what a gift breathing is. Someone who has lung disease or lung cancer or parts of their body missing, ask them what a gift and a blessing breathing is. The image our gospel gives us today reminds us of this gift, reminds us of the comfort that God gives as a mother hen gathers her chicks to her under her wings. I've had chickens and marveled at that unspoken truth that in the face of danger, the hen opens her wings and insists her chicks obey. And they do. It's a cute image of relationship and protection. But perhaps it's not the image to focus on, that cute image. A mother hen stands proudly with her chest thrust forward and her head out front. As she holds her arms stretched wide and protects her children. By doing this, she offers her own life to save the life of her chicks. Think about that image. Think about that in relation to Christ's sacrifice on the cross as she stretches her arms open wide, calls her children to her, and thrusts her life forward in sacrifice for her children. Themes of protection and safety are all over the metaphor of the hen and her chicks. And it's worth noting that mother hens are quite fierce when their children are in danger. And those of us who are parents know this to be true. From the second that life is felt inside, baby even before. But also a mother never forgets her children, even if they forget her or choose a different path. She will usually not turn her face from them. One of the hardest things a parent goes through is seeing a child in pain. Likewise, God mourns when God's children suffer. There is nothing weak about a mother hen protecting her chicks. She demonstrates boldness and compassion and the willingness to do whatever it takes to protect her young. The invitation this Lent is to carry that image of Jesus as a mother hen with us as we travel through these weeks, knowing that his outstretched arms are there for our protection even as he dies for us. Life, salvation, truth. It's not burying our head. It's not ignoring the realities or the dangers up ahead. It's something more to hold on to. We'll sing the words of the hymn again, a cappella. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust.